Well, it's New Year's, just about. By the time this video gets on the internet, it'll be New Year's. So what are you going to make for a New Year's feast? I don't know about where you live, but here in New Orleans, we have corned beef, cabbage, and black-eyed peas, which are awesome any time of the year. So today I'm cooking the influence, New Year's feast. <laughs> Hello and welcome once again to Cooking Under the Influence of me, your host and chef du jour. I'm Sean, and I have a live studio of audience. Mark's becoming a regular on the show, apparently. Yay! So Cooking Under the Influence today, we're going to do black eyed peas, cabbage, and what did I say? Corned beef. Because those are awesome. Oh look, I started without you drinking. Anyway, before we start cooking all that New Year's stuff, it's time for a refill. Today's drink is Old Fashions Booze Colored Glasses. Gotta love that. Let's get a little simple syrup. Remember how to make simple syrup? I showed you several times. Let's use sugar cubes because I'm that kind of guy. Now we get us an orange. Look, I've already cut this orange. You can put it on the edge of the glass and be all fruit fruit like that if you want, but that's just going to get in your face when you drink it. You're going to get us a jigger of bourbon. Get good bourbon. Don't get cheap bourbon. Nobody likes cheap bourbon. Angostura bitters, not Peixos bitters. Peixos bitters go in a Sazerac. Angostura. And here on Cooking Under the Influence, we don't prepare. We don't have a cherry, so we're going to have to just make do. Combine all your ingredients with your finger. It might be better than the first batch. I was just going to say, even better than the last one. Let's start with our corned beef. That takes the longest. The best way I find to do corned beef is in the crock pot. Here's a crock pot now. Oh, it's even clean. That's amazing. There's a not fat side and there's a fat side. I have to look up what makes it corned beef because there's no corn involved. Maybe it's peppercorns, the fat side down. Dump it in there. A little packet of peppercorns. We open that up and put that in there. Just sprinkle them in. They're fabulous. Wait, there's a whole other packet of stuff. Uh-oh. You're supposed to fill it up with water, like just even with the top of the meat. Cover it up, forget about it for like four hours. And just because I'm, gonna, I'm a rebel, I'm going to use beef stock instead. Now remember, this isn't hard. This whole show isn't to show you how hard it is to cook, just to show you how easy it is to cook. Black eyed peas are awesome. So that's the thing. Normally I would do the black eyed peas in the crock pot because they take just as long as the corned beef. We'll get us a decent sized pot. Okay. The black eyed peas are great if you just do water, that's fine. But let's do chicken broth or chicken stock. And we can boil them in there just for a little extra goodness. Onions, green peppers, celery. This is frozen. Most of it. The trash can. Good point. So, hey. who said you're getting any? Bean family can suck if they're just beans, because like the beans. So let's put a little ham in there. I made a ham this week, and I've got good a big chunk of it left. That looks pretty good. A lot of fat in there. All right, so you get the nice big bone. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> nice big bow. Stick it in. Cooking 101. And you know what? It's never going to boil if you don't turn on your stove. Hey, uh, I'd like to place an order for a pizza to be delivered. Four hours. I'm hungry now. Uh, deluxe combo. And can you add Canadian bacon and extra cheese? Yay! Let's turn it way down. So what does an Irish kitchen smell like? Cold and sadness, mostly. Really? If two pounds of this in here, it's probably going to be too much for the pot. Oh, Kosher salt is different than regular salt because it's got a little star of David on there, right there. That's how it's different. Let's let this sit for a few hours. 
And after your orange has been steeped in bourbon, you don't have a hangover in the morning. Mm. You, well, 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 this has a few hours to go. This has a few hours to go. Ugh. I'm debating if I want to have another drink. I've had loads. Oh, very nicely. I've had to add water to it twice because it evaporated. Look what this is a ham. Bones just come out. Oh, God. Is that, was that showing in the background? <laughs> Fucking roach. Don't eat meat, but she sure does like the bone. Black eyed peas, loaded with all kinds of flavors in there. Corned beef with the peppercorns and all the loads of flavor in there, too. So you want something bland to go with the ever flavorful these two dishes here. So do this, boil this in water. And not a whole lot of spicing. Right? Right. Pay attention. Now, let's get us an onion. Here's a white onion. And we'll just slice that up into there. That's simple enough. Our onions nicely slicely. Stick them in there with the cabbage and let those steam, boil, whatever it is you do with cabbage. Nicely slicely. Nicely slicely. <laughs> nicely slicely. That's going to be my first daughter's name. Mm -hmm. Soda water and orange with maybe a little vodka in there. A lot of people think of corned beef and cabbage is an Irish thing. It's not. Bacon and cabbage is an Irish thing. Corned beef and cabbage is something that Irish immigrants started adopting after they came to America. But Irish people don't like the stereotype because it's like poor people food. You can't have that. So we're going to let that rest for a little bit. A little bit of corned beef sliced against the grain. Oh gosh, you really don't even have to slice it. It comes right apart. I'm not eating a whole lot because I'm full of that pizza. Pizza Nola, by the way, here's a free promo because your pizza is so good. You got your beans, your uh, black eyed peas, your corned beef, and your cabbage. Yes, indeed. That's good. From everyone here at Cooking Under the Influence, Happy New Year. Adios and bon appetit. Larry Moe.